Welcome to the Salt Circle Podcast. My name is Hank. Uh, here's the night. It's Ben. Hey, what up? I didn't have a, I didn't have a good one. There were some good ones, and I, I forgot all of them. Yeah, I could have called you dummy. <laughs> yeah, I could have said you have a heart of, you have a silicon soul. Silicon, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a man. What a fucking good series. Show's pretty good. We finished out season one of Batman the Animated Series. Episodes yes. 47 through 65? 65. Uh-huh. I, Which I think is, is like the first set of episodes they made. It's kind of like before it started airing. Gotcha. I assume. Um, like the first production run. I pumped these out on the plane, and then I pumped out the film, and then I started season two. Like, I went ham. <laughs> I uh, was having a good time. Hell yeah. Shit is so... But, like, the, I guess I should say the, the, like the first large chunk of, of this batch I did, like, in the comfort of my own home. Uh-huh. I was also... Uh, fun fact, by the way, on the plane... They had three yep. episodes of Batman the Animated Series. Oh, weird. Would you like to guess what three they were? Uh, Heart of Ice? No. Shockingly. Wow. Um, They're not random, I think. Like, they're good ones, is what I'll say. <laughs> and they're ones that we've seen. Was it On Leather Wings? No. Were they plane-themed? <laughs> <laughs> no, they weren't. That would be pretty good. Uh, they had the the original, like the Two Face origin, that two parter, and they okay. had uh, almost got him. Oh, nice! So I'm like, yeah, that's, hell yeah, that, those are pretty solid. They also had the Batman movie. I was kind of tempted because I had a lot of hours to kill, but I did not. Three hours like for the cartoon, the Batman. No, or no, the, 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 the new, new movie. The new movie. Yeah. yeah three yeah, hour. Yeah. Three, it turns out three hours is still too long, even when you're stuck on an eight hour plane ride. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, these episodes are real fucking good, dude. Yes, true. They just keep, Correct. they just keep pumping out the bangers. It's, it's too powerful. Um, it's really true. <laughs> <laughs> dude some of this shit I, I only did like two episodes from uh season two and i already i already got a lot of shit to talk about i was beyond i wanted to keep going i was super fucking hyped <laughs> <laughs> oh uh but uh it's good to hear going to episode 47 though oh i yeah. you know what i need to mention one last thing that i i told you but not on you know not on air um Sure. I definitely cro I crossed the threshold. I'm just watching Batman. I, I'm not, no, <laughs> no games. No phone. It's only me and no God. No fun. Yeah, no fun. No lights. No sun. <laughs> it's me in the darkness. Hell yeah, dude. You've, beco you've become the night. Yeah. Everything just <laughs> melts into black animation paper. Uh, there's some episodes in here. Or Batman doesn't even have the blue. He's just totally black. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can, like, barely make him out. Ugh. It's um, funny. I mean, so I guess diving into episode 47, Birds of a Feather. Yeah. Number one comment for this this episode was the <laughs> the man who is, like, a caricature of a rich person. Uh huh. He sounds exactly like the fucking yacht rock radio announcer from Sirius Satellite Radio. Dude is like, "We're bringing you the smoothest hints for the summer." And that guy just sounds like that. I was dying. I was losing my fucking mind. Every every word he said, I was just. It was ten out of ten. Um, that's very funny. I felt real bad for Penguin this episode. You know. Kind yeah. of kind of shit. Though he did offer Penguin Penguin, he's not he doesn't belong in Arkham. 
He's not crazy. He's he's just a little cringe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so society hates him so he turns against society you know? he did offer Batman a, a, a latte or whatever and then handed him a can of rat poison <laughs> it's like how about a coffee <laughs> just a fucking can of rat I'm like man this dude is bold mostly he's just cringe though he's pretty cringe. that's what the- it's what the rich people are all making fun of him about, basically. Yeah. Without that well, word. they need the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they need him to... They need to spice up the party. Like, oh, remember when the Joker crashed so-and-so's party? Oh. If only. Because that's who you <laughs> want. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's that's uh, what you want. Yeah, you definitely want the Joker around. That's a good idea. That always ends well for everyone. God, it even though, like... Uh, <laughs> Like when Bruce is like, maybe don't. <laughs> maybe this is a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it ended like, look, they got a fire breathing dragon out of it. So like <laughs> that worked. Pfft. Shit did get wild. The- it popped off. It was a good one. I liked it. I think this is the best Penguin episode we've had. I think. I would say so. Like, even after this even after this batch, I think it's the best one. I think. Yeah. Uh, problem is, it's so hard to top... Um, him selling everyone, have you no drama in your souls? And the almost got him I mean, with yeah, this but the, aviary of doom. That's not an exclusive <laughs> get out of here yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking collaboration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that have that have have yeah, you no drama. That's not really, dude. The fucking it's callbacks really to that episode are too powerful. In this <laughs> batch, I was holy shit. <laughs> uh huh. Um. Yeah, no, this, this, uh, this, I mean, it was a good, like, I started the batch, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we back. introduced to Veronica v- Vreeland, who then shows up again at the end yeah, yeah. of this batch. Yeah, yep. Uh, she sucks, <laughs> but, yeah, uh. No good. Not in, like, a she's completely awful way. <laughs> like, she actually, like, it's funny that she, like, actually kind of likes the big one by the end of it. But... Yeah, she's like, you know, he did defend me, <laughs> like, when we got attacked. <laughs> Like maybe he's not just a person, a, a, a cringe. Like she is about. friends with awful people anyway. So yeah. <laughs> um. Very funny. The next episode was fucking wild. In many uh-huh. ways, what the, is reality? The Riddler, the Riddler virtual reality one. <laughs> yeah, dude. First off, we start off with like the, the I've noticed this a little bit just how they do like and I, I feel like this is probably pretty common for like any cartoon especially even slightly older cartoons where like we need a lot of people talking but instead of like them overlapping it's like six people saying lines spaced out from each other <laughs> and the sure. the uh like the stock the, the like popular stock market phrases at the beginning it was like it was it was so good <laughs> i need 20,000 of this buy buy sell <laughs> like just like just people yelling stuff before the little uh, before the message pops up i was like uh-huh, the it's stock just, market scene yeah yeah it's just like you know like it's endearing but i was just like yeah it's pretty good <laughs> it's supposed to be all hectic and crazy um yeah they just like they literally for those scenes, they literally they just have all the voice actors who are in their cast doing it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which is it's pretty not that many people. <laughs> no, no. But like they could at least like overlap it or something, or have like a you know, but whatever. <laughs> who cares? Yeah, that one was you know, it was more easy to pick stuff out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know I also know they'll bring in like. When they do that stuff, like, like they will like bring in all the writers or, or producers who are around. Sure. 
just to have them do their shit. Yeah. Yeah, just to increase the number of people. I really like the virtual world. I think I I find it insane. the virtual boy r- world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't. Believe I love that. the 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 the. Yeah, go on. I I think it's it it's more makes more sense of the thing of like, it hooks it just hooks into your brain somehow. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like I was like, who the fuck is putting on this helmet? <laughs> Robin's just like, check this out. I'm jacked in. I can feel it in my uh-huh. in my cranium. <laughs> Just like uh-huh. wave it at the screen. Yeah, man. It's better than the VR we have now. We learned that Robin is a, a whiz at solving a Baxter's box because he uses a fuck. He just smashed it. <laughs> uh-huh. We already know he's a gamer. Oh, dude, he's he's yeah. He's like world's world's greatest. I love that the I love that him smashing it came back. Like, Batman is like, if Robin can fucking do it, I can solve it. And just starts beating the <laughs> shit out of it with hammer hands. Uh-huh. <laughs> that shit was Find so Find the right good. one sometime. Yeah, man. The thing I really liked was, early on, you, we see a shot of the Joker, like, at his computer. And I like the idea of him, like... I actually don't like at the end when they find him, and his domino mask is on for no reason. I like oh, the idea yeah. of him, like, just sitting there as, like, a guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not in costume. <laughs> Dude, at the end, like, what a fucking ending, though. I was like, are they, they're just fucking leaving him there? <laughs> they all just bail while he's freaking out in <laughs> cyberspace? Yep. Like, nothing left to do. I'm like, you're gonna leave him there, and he's gonna be back, though. You didn't double tap. Yeah, I kind of don't love... I also kind of just don't love how much shit the Riddler eats at the end. Like, how did he not have... Because they make... He, like, says, like, oh, I have an easy escape, and he didn't. He, <laughs> he did, just Yeah, gets, he did not. <laughs> he just gets trapped. <laughs> and the fucking, like... The little random, like, cartoon science bit, like, Batman is duplicating himself. He's like, how can you keep your mind coherent or whatever through like 32 copies and like shit starts breaking down I'm like what's yeah, going yeah. how does this work <laughs> who's in charge of this <laughs> the riddler clearly yeah he really had a handle on things he had to hold physics together imagine, <laughs> and then uh... imagine designing a virtual world that you control but you don't control it mm-hmm. it was a solid episode though some it was some sciencey magic bullshit. Oh hell yeah, what it was. The but fact it was that he, fun. the fact that he just delivers the computer, and everyone's uh-huh. like, "Yeah, we'll just fucking, we'll do it." <laughs> well, I also like the idea like Robin's been using this thing; it's been fine. But you let one old guy near it, <laughs> nightmare. <Yeah. laughs> Everything goes wrong. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, it's a death trap. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was, it was good shit. Bit of, bit of virtual reality. I, I'm looking at my notes for the next episode. Uh I'm trying to, I, my notes don't tell me anything about what the episode actually is. I just need to quick. Okay. 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 I am another crime alley. It's another crime alley one. Where Gordon gets shot, and yeah. Batman's like, "Well, this is um, this is the one. Quit. This is the one where I sent you the screenshot where he's like, is it where he's really weary of like doing his thing? Or is that I think a different? So. Okay, it's all blended together. I." My notes for this episode are this episode is already crazy good fuck. Um Maybe I didn't Oh, you know what? I think it is that one because it starts out with that and I took a screenshot and then the rest of the episode like I didn't take any screenshots cuz it was like I it, I couldn't. <laughs> like it just uh. I'm not screenshotting this shit. Like people are having a bad time. <laughs> yeah. Um it definitely 
it definitely like and i mean actually like a lot of the stuff in this batch and like when i went a little past this show like it hits emotional moments so well like it's not afraid to let there be like a bad moment you know so uh-huh. for this one like what i wrote down in my notes and i and i remember it like burned in my brain is when bullock turns around and he says oh my god like it fucking hits because they don't you know they're not dropping that sort of shit all the time and it's like it mm-hmm. is like oh my god like it's just and that and because of that character right he's usually doing yeah. his, his brash bullshit and so for him to be like suddenly worried and alarmed like it it just fucking hits and this whole sure. episode like god damn if they continue to crush it with anything involving his parents true true it's just always good yeah the, my only thing about this episode it's like much it, this plot is so much more a Spider-Man story than a <laughs> Batman story. Like Spider-Man sure. is out here to like quit at the drop of a hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't do a Batman wants to quit story very like too often. Have like they done this is a, like have they done another one until now? I don't think so. Cuz like I think this I think this is fine like having it. Cause... Yeah, no. I don't I don't have I don't have a problem with it. I'm just, I was just thinking about it because I was watching. It's like, this is a good episode. You, you couldn't, this is not a well they actually, you can go to a lot. Oh yeah. Or no, should totally. go to a lot with this character. Like but, uh, they do it. They're just, it's kind of more like a testament to how good they are that they can do a Batman is like shaken and wants to quit because, because of someone getting hurt. I um I think it's also very important that they like they don't have him they don't have the incident happen and then he wants to quit. It I mean like fully want to quit anyway. Like it starts out and he's like fucking tired. Like he's just he's already wondering like is it even doing anything? Like is this worth it? blah blah blah. And then and then this shit happens and that's mm. like the the straw that broke the camel's back, and I and that makes it work. I think, cause yeah, if he just like he had one mistake and then like suddenly it's all over, like that'd be a little that'd be far weaker. Yeah, I don't know. There's just part of me that's like, really, this should he, he should be, <laughs> like he should be trying harder or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not quitting. <laughs> yeah, like doubling down on his shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, um, I agree. Whereas the Spider-Man thing is always like someone close to him dies, or <laughs> they too, they've done way too many times. Um, yeah, and he yeah. wants to give up, or like you know his his something something bad happens because someone's close to him or something. But yeah, like there's just the thing of like Batman. That's just because. You know, Batman is a more less nuanced character, honestly, uh, to me when he's good. So yeah, sure. It's not the only thing, but but it's not like this episode's bad or anything. Yeah, yeah. I would hope not. He pulls himself together by the end. Yeah, he gets he back, gets back on the horse, does his thing. Uh, and then we get off balance. Um, first note on this one and biggest note, all caps took me, blew my soul away. I was like the penny. Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the giant fucking penny just chilling in the back cave and Alfred's polishing it. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, man. It's just there now. It's so fucking good. I never, I never in a million years when they were like, "What is so what happened to the penny?" They let him keep it. I never, I never expected that to fucking come back. Oh my god! No, the giant penny in the back cave is a classic thing. That's incredible. That's just, <laughs> it's fucking incredible, dude. Like I was so, I was just losing it. Oh man. <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> it's very large. It's a, it's big, a ass, big penny. Albert has to polish it all. <laughs> <laughs> It's a fucking ladder. He just got. He has that tiny cloth. He's just doing like a little chunk. Squirt, squirt. <laughs> That's why he doesn't have time for dates. I was, uh, <laughs> I was happy. I called this episode a little bit, at least at the end when they, they gave us like um, Talia's father, and I was well. Uh-huh. This, this leads me into an interesting thing. Am I going insane? Did the uh, uh, Christian Nolan films pronounce it as Raz Al Ghul? I'm pretty sure they did. Okay, because I wrote. I'm pretty my... sure they mispronounced it. Like, yeah, it's classic Hollywood, right? Dude, I yeah, I I mean, and I I never knew. Ne- how would I? Um, and I'm like, I wrote in my notes at the end. I'm like, Raz Al Ghul. And then we skip to the whatever episode later where we see him, and I'm like, Rachel Ghoul, what? How bad did they fuck this up in those films? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> how do you how do you do this? But I called it. I was pretty happy. I was like, this. He doesn't look anything like Liam Neeson, but I think this is him. <laughs> mm-hmm. I got it. Um, this was a fucking cool episode. What's the, what's the title? Off balance. Um, Off balance. I'd forgotten that they seeded Talia in an earlier episode. Actually, oh, uh, I didn't remember that this episode existed. It's been a, it's been a, it's been too long. Wild. Cause I like I do. Uh, what what would you put this? Like a solid, a very good, a meh. It's fine. Okay, like fine. Yeah, I thought there was some pretty cool shit in it. And some sure. like, there's like the the effect of where they animate stuff to that like, the uh, disorientation of that power is cool. When everything becomes it's, like a spiral, it's cool. It's also it's neat. It's also a little cursed. Like it was kind of too good. <laughs> I was sitting. I'm like, ooh, can't. I need to like lean back out of this. <laughs> sure. That dude just has the eye patch disorienter or whatever sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just i'm just like saying that. this episode not as good as the next one well yeah fucking obviously <laughs> um this is this episode's fine but we got that super fucking cool shot of uh the dude firing the sonic gun and his jacket and shit is like blowing back that was good mm. shot was so good and i thought it was just uh I love that Batman beats that power by closing his eyes. I, I literally had that in my note. Like, how Talia's did you, like, what? Did, how did you do how that? How can you possibly? I kept my eyes closed. I kept my eyes closed. <laughs> like, that's, it doesn't affect your brain or anything. It's just visual. Uh-huh. It's so fucking good, dude. That was so funny. <laughs> Dad, no, that was... That was like the that was like the peak. That the the <laughs> shot of the gun, him keeping his eyes fucking closed, and um, yeah, yeah. The other thing that I thought was uh, pretty cool was how. I guess it was Rachel Ghoul was, yeah, it had to have been because he does it like throughout the other episodes. He calls him the detective. I like that shit. Rachel, he's not in this episode. I don't he's think, at the very. At he's at the very end. Oh, is he? Okay. He makes one. Because I think he makes one comment, like, he calls him the detective. We get, like, one line. Okay. But we don't okay. we don't know who he is, and we don't see his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's yeah, cool. and uh, the, again, this is the first episode with Talia. I, I like this version of Talia. Well, she's just hot as hell. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I, I mean, we'll get to it later, but I'm like, I, you know what? I ship, I ship Talia and Bruce slash Batman. Like, that's a... Uh, <laughs> I'm into it. It's good. She's just she's just very hot and she's very into him, but she's also evil. <laughs> she's not like evil, evil though. Like she's a little sure. Know. But yeah, how she always calls him beloved. I'm like, man, this is like some this is like some darling shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that she knows he's uh Bruce Wayne. Man, his face was fucked up in this episode too. <laughs> He's like, my yeah. mask. And she's like, to better treat your wounds. And he has, like, fucking giant golf balls hanging off his face. He's just uh-huh. all beat to shit. Yep. 
Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, now we have the man who killed Batman, Ep- an all-timer of an episode. episode an all-timer. Episode 51. The man who killed Batman. Fucking incredible. <laughs> what a good... In so many ways, too. Um, yeah. Like, the fact that it's, like, a framed episode or whatever, you know, with the him telling the story of shit. Uh-huh. Like, the whole thing is just so good. Just like Say that really just following this guy just, yeah just a dude <laughs> he's like my dream is just wants respect but it like his ambitions are it's like high but like not high yeah and he's like he's like sitting at a table where everyone's cheering his name he's like i got everything i ever wanted <laughs> he just got a little smile on his face <laughs> And like he's like like he wants to be a gangster, but he's not like he doesn't really understand everything involved in that. It feels yeah, he like he has like he like... has like no I- no real idea of what's involved. <laughs> um, I love how he's drawn in contrast to everybody. <laughs> like he's just a real uh-huh. simple, like almost kind of dopey look. Like he what he's yeah. whenever he's standing next to someone else, you're like, why is everyone else so detailed? <laughs> Uh, I got... love I love that even after he tells the story, Thor just thinks he's lying. It's like yeah. nobody's that lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's um, impossible. We had a so for some of my notes. I don't know where it comes into. I, I guess it was uh at the. It must have been when they were at the table, and then yeah, because that's when the other dude is like, you know, I figure if I take out the guy who took out Batman, then I'm the new number one. Like, nah. oh, shit, we Dragon Ball now. That's a that's a power <laughs> level scheme if I've ever heard one. Um, we got that fucking top tier moment of like the fights going on, and they decide to just have the bartender like push a bowl onto a guy. <laughs> <laughs> like that shit is so good. Just this, the little moments are too too good. The fucking bartender starts like eating popcorn yeah he's like eating stuff out of the bowl and then he pushes the bowl onto the dude who's like fucked up in in front of the bar it was so good man this episode was such a ride you get harley uh, quinn like acting like uh what's her full name harleen Qu- quinzel harleen quinzel quinzel i was close um and do it like fucking what was it i uh i subpoenaed you once a very small subpoena. <laughs> like, that shit was so good. <laughs> Fucking Joker. Putting him in the oh, ass. the Joker and... stuff. The Joker shit was so good. <laughs> him being like... I don't know. It's such a good concept of like... I guess in, ge- in, in general, like the idea of like the hero and the villain sort of needing each other not even necessarily uh-huh. in a fundamental like balance thing but just like they need each other because they like it <laughs> like they just like doing yeah. their bullshit kind of like uh well megamind type shit sure and joker and I, i've i think more modern versions of this go actually go too far for my taste um specifically the lego batman movie but um the thing that i love about this is like Joker gets all depressed about it, and I only actually, actually, also, I, I really, I only want the Joker to feel this way. I really yes, don't like yes. it when they try to make Batman feel yeah, any no, way of, the, like that either. The one, the one uh, side in this, I really, I really like. Uh, but I love that at the end, after they've pushed Sid into the acid, Joker's like sad for like a second, and then he's like, "Well, now to the next thing." Yeah, man. <laughs> like he's just. Into the thing he's into in the moment, and the thing he's into in this moment is being sad about Batman being dead and being mad that fucking some nobody did it. Yeah, no, it's like he's he's concocted the scheme to like make himself care about this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to like get invested. I do like that they had the nice it, little. It is uh... when he like tells Harley to put the fucking jewels back, and she's like, "What?" Yeah. He's like, put it back. 
Oh my god, yeah, when they're robbing the place, he's like, he's usually here by now. Where that where is he? <laughs> Put him back. Yeah. <laughs> god, that shit was too good, dude. That whole sequence just incredible. And then they Fucking, do he puts the kick the kick me sign. No, do at the funeral when they're, when they're pushing the box down they're playing amazing grace on a kazoo yes <laughs> like it's so fucking great harley's over the top crying at the she, funeral yeah, she's losing it <laughs> the joker giving his speech and then like it turning into just him attacking sid where he's like spitting yeah dude he's so mad i didn't <laughs> oh did i save one of the Maybe I sent you. His, sent me one. I sent a screenshot of like one of his, like his quip or yeah, whatever. Like that 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 particular frame is really well drawn. Who's not fit to lick the dirt from my spats? Yeah, yeah. Without Batman, crime has no punchline. Yeah, that shit's so good. And this, I had, I had a screenshot of like Batman's entrance when he comes back. I guess that's when uh, Sid is talking to the Thorn, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The battering just right into the fucking gun. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's so cool. And then he's like, you know, he, you because know, it's Batman, and he's like a good human, and he's like, he understands that this guy is just like, kind of got into shit that's too big for him at all. Uh -huh. that. He's like, you'll get, like, think about how much respect you'll get like for almost killing batman then he's walking through prison he's got that same dumb smirk on his face <laughs> yeah he still actually got everything he wanted oh man because what he because he's an idiot yeah 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 oh but he's like also he's at the end he's like ready to just leave and batman's like no 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 hang on um <laughs> you're still fucked up <laughs> Yeah, what a definitely an all-timer yeah. episode, man. Yeah, just incredibly. That crime has no punchline line is just you know that just lives in your brain forever. Oh yeah, dude. It's the kind of and as always, like the delivery is fucking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mark Hamill's Joker is uh, top tier. God, he's there was um. I actually don't. <laughs> I don't remember what it, cause I actually didn't get to do my full skim of all these episodes near the near the like the last four or whatever. Um, sure. I forget which episode it was. I don't think I wrote it down. There was one where like he turned he's like talking to someone and the screen goes like fucking red and he's super pissed. I don't think that's in the movie. I don't know. It all blends together a little bit, honestly. But uh, he does like a serious line like. I don't know, like, he's, like, he's clearly super pissed, and he has, like, this really scary delivery of a line, and then he immediately bounces back to, like, joking around. And I'm like, this is just fucking great. <laughs> like, everything he does is so good, man. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. We had a great Clayface episode. Yeah. 52. Uh, Mudslide. Clayface is melting. Yeah, dude. I I thought it was fucking cool. I even said drippy off his game Clayface is like a really cool thing. <laughs> uh his fucking his suit. He yeah, it's like, like his little uh, compression it's like pressed into. Yeah, yeah, they like run the shit through it. We got fucking an all we got some all timer lines. He's losing his integrity. I wasn't aware he had any to begin with. I'm speaking <laughs> in a physiological sense, Alfred. <laughs> and God, later... Alfred is always there for his zinger. Dude, he like I feel like they've ramped him up at the last couple of batches. Like he's had so many great lines. It's like Alfred's job at some point is to deliver zingers. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> In a show that doesn't really have a lot of characters that are there just for zingers. Yeah. I mean, he also, I don't know what, I don't know how far apart they were or how, whatever. But uh, the other uh -huh. line he has is something's going on. He's like, how grotesque. Tea? 
<laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> he knows the priorities. Um. Yeah. This, uh, I mean, and the what part where he eats Batman? Oh. Oh, Clay like he's like he could clay face, face like Batman. consumes him. I thought you were still talking about Alfred. I was like, hang on. No, no, no. <laughs> was there like a Batman cookie? Like, what are we? <laughs> No, no, no. Okay. But yeah, no. Back to that, the episode. Yeah, that shit is so cool. And we get, I sent you the screenshot, the chest burster Batman. <laughs> like, yeah, out, like his alien. face just <laughs> yeah. sticking out. Oh, and then the gra- <laughs> he's like, out of him. I can hear him. I can hear it. Feel his heart plate slowing down. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'll be real. Um,. I can, I, I mean, like, as, as always, I can, I can kind of see both, both ways, but I kind of feel like Batman fucked this one up a little bit. Like, I understand that they were doing bad shit, but it seems like if they were allowed to finish the, the, the bad shit, then he would have been fine. And I feel like that would have been better long term. I understand that they're doing bad shit, but also... You know? Well, and Hagen's end goals are to be Clayface again, not to be cured. To be Clayface so he can commit more crime. But, like... I don't know. He can Maybe he convinced me. <laughs> Am I falling for, for the villain? Oh, no. This is why I, st- this is why I stay away from charismatic... <laughs> villains they suck me in there. the part where he he completely plays her by literally repeating his line from his movie that she was just watching and yeah, she just no, eats it of up course. yeah no of course i mean that was obvious i wasn't that like, part is very funny i wasn't yeah no that was that was i, I was like this is a bit much <laughs> like really girl she is down hard Oh, dude, she's she simping. Him. She wants him bad. And he does not give a shit about her. Yeah, no. I mean, that part was clear. But <laughs> I guess I was... I guess, uh, you know, he... I, he can. He half convinced me. The half that I was convinced on was that he just wanted to be able to, like, at least hold his form easily or whatever as Hagen. Um... That makes sense that I that that's not the the read. But again, he doesn't think of himself as Hagen anymore. He only thinks of himself as Clayface. Yeah, I suppose. Because that's definitely yeah. Uh... That's why he rejects Batman's help. Batman like wants to help him. Yeah, yeah. Be yeah, Hagen yeah. again, if that were a thing you were interested in. But really, he's not. But is he not interested because he doesn't believe it can happen? Like, he was, I mean, it, and it's, you know, it, like, in the end, it kind of does, like, it, it doesn't truly matter, because, like, he's, he's I mean, I think he likes he's being Clayface. Yeah, but he I He just doesn't I also, like melting. I also think, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Um, I also think about his origin a lot, or, but not his, not his origin origin, but, like, him in the mirror, when he has that brief spark of hope. And he's like, holy shit, like, I can just morph into people. Like, this is incredible. And his friend is really happy for him. But then immediately Mm. he's like, it's too fucking difficult. Like, you can't hold it. And he just, like, gives up and, like, whatever. Mm. And, like, I totally understand that mindset, you know. Like, think of someone, like, a more, uh, less muddy situation with, like, someone loses a limb and they have to, like, go through rehabilitation. And they're all, like, they just had a fucking traumatic event. And now they're like, it's too fucking difficult. Like, this is never going to work, whatever. Like, that's a thing I can I can see. And, like, it, you know, it's shitty. But uh-huh. also, like, those people usually don't go on to, like, rob banks and try to fucking <laughs> absorb people into them. So, you and know. be fine with murdering people? Yeah. Yeah. You know, usually. <laughs> um, this was the episode. Where it's kind of thematically related in terms of uh, emotion. Uh, I'll make my music note <laughs> for, the, for this sure. match. Music continues to be fucking incredible. 
continues mm-hmm. to blow me away that they literally don't have just a straight Batman's in danger theme. We're going to play this for the 800th time. It's always uh, a motif. It's the, th- yeah. it's the it's the lines, but it's weaseled into whatever they're doing for the it's it's fucking incredible. It I don't where did they get this fucking money? <laughs> like, holy shit. Um, I'm telling you, dude, they had a, they had a, the kind of budget they chose to, would not have for too much <laughs> longer. Only had in this small window. It's where literally Steven Spielberg was like, we should spend money on cartoons. It's fucking insane. <laughs> um, my specific note is like the thing I noticed in this episode was. At the end, when Clayface is on the off the cliff and Batman's trying to help him, and he falls into the water, and you know he dissipates and shit. the The music that we get for that moment, the fact that it was able to simultaneously swell in triumph for Batman being safe and and like not falling to his doom. And also, it somehow stays somber because Clayface is, like, a tragic character, and he just melted into the ocean. Fucking insane. You're doing triumph and somber at the same time? What the fuck? (laughs) Like, it's wild, dude. That's, Mm -hmm. like, good lord. Like, it's not just that it's orchestrated, like, like you know, they're doing unique stuff, but, like, they're doing it so fucking well, too. Just wild. Just fucking outstanding. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, w- I went back uh, nope. and watched that bit a couple of times. Yeah, I just wanted to give credit. The person in charge of the score was Shirley Walker. She was the one. Yeah. Who doing being in charge of stuff. I mean, she absolutely destroyed it. She went way harder than any person <laughs> needed to, and it's amazing. Uh huh. Yeah. There's a lot of that on the show of people going way harder than anyone needed to. I mean, or I think probably of, should have. I think of uh, the animators were also doing that. <laughs> yeah. But with like the- four higher work animation studios that well, were fucking killing themselves on this show. I think of fucking what's what's the actual title? Heart of Ice. Right? Heart of Ice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The fucking frost on his thing. Yes, like, the yeah. airbrushing the frost on every frame. Like. Oh, Mr. Freeze's home. You didn't need to. But <laughs> God you damn, really I'm so glad you to. did. <laughs> yeah. Um, Yeah, this, this episode was just like, that's my. That was good shit. It was very fun. And the music was yeah. just incredible. Um. Mm-hmm. 53, paging the crime doctor. Yeah. We get to meet Batman's mechanic. Oh, no, not that one. I was going to say, this is a different one. That's the mechanic two episodes from now. (laughs) This is Rupert Thorne's brother. (laughs) The doctor. The doctor for criminals. For treating Thorne, right? Or like he didn't report a bullet or whatever. That was in Thorne or something. So something i can't remember it anymore um my my line i didn't have too many notes for this um my my first one was just from i guess when some bad guys were trying to defeat batman and they pushed him over the Uh edge and they're like he's history and i'm like there wasn't (laughs) even a fucking splash (laughs) like what are you doing yeah. Even if there was, it's questionable. But come on, what is this amateur hour? First day on the job. At least in Man Who Killed Batman, he had his cowl. Yeah, like you can't. Like there was a lot of reason to believe. Here, I'm like, what are you? What are you doing? <laughs> Just assume Batman's not dead. How about? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, that's you would think at this point. Um, I think this had. Probably one of the most grim and possibly darkest, like, scenes that we've seen so far. Which um one? Maybe it's just because, like, it was pretty... It, it's, like, too... Re- it's, like, too close to a thing that could just, like, happen. Um, 
when the goons when the dude shows up with his goons to kidnap uh kidnap leslie tompkins like uh uh-huh. that shit felt so bad because like yeah. there wasn't any like cartoon villain shit going on like it was just an old woman being apprehended by like two bad guys and it, i was like this is being apprehended by like an old friend of hers <laughs> yeah and I, like just how they like how the the i guess like her trying to not get kidnapped like how that was all choreographed i'm like this like i poof poof uh-huh rough yeah i really like anytime we've got leslie tompkins an episode is a good time though oh totally Totally. She's great. Because I love that she's just an adult who knows Bruce Wayne is Batman. Yeah. Oh, totally. <laughs> and she's just like a, a normal adult <laughs> in a way that like Alfred isn't because he's just here for quips, really. Yeah, yeah. And like she's a sane person. She's like, yeah. Please. You're, you just broke every. You rib. just need to stop. <laughs> Can you not? She's like living in the real world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's a straight man. <laughs> broke every rib. Just please, one night. <laughs> just rest. Just you're liter- a an upcoming episode. You're literally blind. Please, just please rest. take a night off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that shit was good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love that. It is funny, like that. Guy, he's the, the crime doctor, Overthorn's brother. He's like willing to go all the way, Matthew Thorne, until like he realizes they're just gonna kill Leslie, and then he's like, "Oh, oh well, shit." Yeah, oh, <laughs> I guess. Uh, that's no good. <laughs> yeah, dude. And then uh, it, the other the other note I had was like for near the end where. You know, they bring him in, and Bruce is, like, saying he'll help him get his shit back or whatever. And he's like, no one's owning me again. Like, I'm not I'm not going to work for you or whatever. And he's like, no, no, no. Just tell me about my father. Uh-huh. He's like, shit. <laughs> like, they always, they always hit you. Any, I mean, also, anytime it's a Leslie episode, like, <laughs> we're going to yeah. fucking hit that. Mm-hmm. True. And then we got Zatanna. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I like Zatanna. She's cool. I fo- I find it funny they like don't show off that she has magic powers in this episode. They're like unwilling to commit to her actually being magic. Yeah, no, I was kind of <laughs> I was waiting for like the the entire time I'm like I I guess at the end I guess at the end we'll get like a little taste and we never got a taste. No. At this point there we're unwilling to go that far. Yeah. But she it's was more still... more that they did as a ten episode because Paul Dini fucking loves Zatanna. I mean <laughs> She's his favorite. She's good <laughs> shit, dude. Yeah. I wish we had really good shit with her in it. Like I think she's great. I like like as far as a like her character goes, I think she was fucking incredible. Like, yeah, she was just super cool. Um, what did I have for uh for notes? Oh yeah, the in the uh, in the flashback of of Bruce and uh, uh, Zatara training uh-huh. or whatever, and then she does like the pull a card thing, and he pulls the Joker. <laughs> Like fucking that oof. was good. Oof. That was that was amazing. <laughs> it's like he nailed it. <laughs> he nailed it. Her fucking <laughs> Batman picks her up in the Batmobile after like the they're trying to arrest her for the all the bank money disappearing. Like, what do you care about some leggy dame and nylons? Or have I answered my own question? <laughs> like fucking so good, dude. <laughs> That Batman just like fucking grimaces at her. <laughs> I can't. I had another note. I assume so. The so you know the, the plot of this one, like the 
guy who exposes magicians has like set her up and shit because he's also mm-hmm. using the own all the tricks against them montague kane i assume yeah. maybe it's him i have the note um that fucking punch to the face <laughs> did, did, did she punch him in the face i honestly can't remember who gets fucking maybe god i think that's it i'm pretty sure she punches him in the face yeah it sounds like a thing that happens that sounds like a thing that happens right Man, yeah. because I do kind of remember like her getting to actually punch people, and sometimes they kind of ally actually showing punches in the show. Yeah, yeah. I should um, I should mention my time management is not fantastic. I have like a little over twenty minutes, twenty five maybe. Okay, ideally, we'll, we'll um, speed up a little. Yeah, uh, the mechanic. Late. Mechanic is an incredible episode. As someone who fucking loves the Batmobile, <laughs> mm-hmm. first note: Batmobile episode. Batmobile episode, pretty good Penguin episode. Penguin writes a check for four hundred thousand dollars and immediately ships the dude to Davy Jones in a rubber duck. <laughs> like that <laughs> shit was fucking great. <laughs> It, that is the thing that happens, yes. It's very funny. <laughs> and he fucking, like, the fact that all of these other episodes we've had, with the Penguin wanting to be, you know, he, in in his eyes, he is part of high society. He's a gentleman, mm-hmm. right? All this other mm-hmm. stuff. He has a car that farts. <laughs> his car <laughs> farts on, on the Batmobile or whatever. <laughs> he, was, put, he has a giant rubber duck that he <laughs> yeah, sends that, basically down the toilet. God. <laughs> When to he's... kill a guy. Yeah, man. Like, class. That's yeah, dude, class. Yeah. Elegance. <laughs> Grace. You can't just murder someone. Yeah. I thought this like this was a I thought this was a pretty pretty cool episode. Um just cause like, you know, see the mechanic, you got the Batmobile stuff. Um We did get well, I like that I love that um like uh i guess not bruce like batman's solution is like don't worry about uh ordering parts we're gonna move you to an even better place i've set up like several shell corporations <laughs> I'm like, Jesus. yeah uh-huh. like it's so much it, it just the like you know i know he's rich but the way that he swings his money around in this is just like it's, <laughs> it's great yeah this is my uh-huh. bad should have thought of it don't worry yeah. about it anymore and then fucking and, we get baited. We get baited more than we ever have in this entire series thus far. When Earl is like, wait till you see the no Batmobile. I'm like, don't, oh, you, don't you fucking do it. Don't do it to my heart. <laughs> You're not getting it. That's just a line. And that's what I said. <laughs> I'm like, such a cool opportunity, but I know we ain't getting a new ride. Yeah. Uh the other thing about this, I sent you the screenshot. We get that fucking vintage Batmobile. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like when he approaches Earl. the bat face Earl. on the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's that a car sh- with the bat face, which is sort of similar to er- older Batmobile designs. Okay. Like, there are Batmobile designs that are kind of like that, it, just in terms of having that big Batman head on the front. Yeah. Would... Yeah. And just being, like, a blue car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this is, like... Uh, I love the Batmobile, so. Yeah, we've got Shadow of the Bat parts one and two. Uh, bro, you Bat skipped Girl an episode. episodes. Oh, I did. You Harley and Ivy. The episode. First. Harley and Ivy. Holy that is, it is a big episode. Moly. This is the first episode where those two characters were paired up together. In the plot. It was just because. I didn't. Paul think... Dini thought it would be fun. <laughs> I didn't think we were gonna go like. Not that it's, like, super gay or anything, but I didn't think we were going to get even as much as we did. Like, they were walking around in t-shirts, like, all domestic and, like... It's really the, it's really the, the scene where they're just both wearing... Only wearing big shirts. Big shirts and, like, eating a meal at the table and... Yeah, 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 And look. She's like, oh, I made salad and beet juice. That beet juice looks interestingly like wine. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's in a wine glass sure. looking kind of thing, like... I was, sure. I'm reading it that way. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, Jesus. Um, 
Oh, that that the episode is just fucking incredible. They roll up next to the dudes in the car and they're like cat calling and doing all their <laughs> bullshit and fucking Harley, Harley pulls out a <laughs> rocket launcher. Are you kidding that me? That part <laughs> That part owns. And then they don't they don't do like a bit where like, oh it's fireworks or something. Like she blows their fucking car up. <laughs> like she yep. annihilates it. Yeah. And there's just a thing of like this is it's like kind of an accidental parry, but then they just have like it turns out they just have great chemistry and their outfits like look good when they're just oh, standing yeah. next to each other. Yeah, it just yeah. like works. Even though these characters were not designed to ever interact. Um really? Yeah. It's it's funny how like instantly magic it is. Oh yeah, dude. Like as soon as they meet, I I was like, okay, like first meeting, like who know? Maybe it doesn't like mesh as well, but like there's good shit that comes from it. Like no, dude, mm-hmm. it just clicks. It was great. Poison oaky. Poison oaky. It's ivy. <laughs> and I like that. Um, you know, she's got like the feminist stuff going on. They tie Batman up with all the vacuum cleaners and shit. <laughs> <laughs> like. That shit was great. Yeah. And they, they attack the fucking Adventurers Club from Paddington. <laughs> yeah, I was literally <laughs> thinking about that, too. I'm like, man, you're really giving it to them. No more going to fucking Dangerous Peru, I guess. Um, Darkest Peru. Darkest Peru, Dangerous Peru. Whatever. I like the idea of, of Poison Ivy just living in, like, a toxic this housing dump. community that's that's be, that's like completely poisoned. The land is just toxic. Yeah, because she can she can handle it. Yeah, she has to give uh-huh. Harley the shot. Um, Harley. Oh, uh, there's so many little animation details in this too that are just that really enhance the episode. Like Harley kicking her feet. Yeah, when yeah, she doesn't yeah, yeah. want the thing when they're like running out of the museum. Like, fuck, I, Ivy like body checks the cops. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Um, um, my favorite bit was, I mean, not, I mean, not favorite, but the favorite bit was the t-shirts and the wine. Um, uh, but, uh, I fucking love that they did the, no man can take us prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Montoya is like, <laughs> check. <laughs> I can't believe they yes. did it. Oh, it's, it's so good. It was, it was perfect. That is the perfect cover. Yeah. Fucking 10 out of 10 episode. Ever, no complaints. Yeah, it's a great one. It's an all-timer. Uh, uh, we did fucking Batgirl episode. The double. The uh, the double header. Shadow the double. The, deuce. The, the, the double. Shadow of the Bat, part one and part two. 57, 58, respectively. Mm-hmm. Bud. Oh, man. She's back. <laughs> Also, she called Robin a dork. She called Robin a fucking dork. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, also, I apologize if there's a train noises in the background. I, I assume you can't hear them. I don't know if they're popping on Audacity. My window is not I a match. Hear them. So, um, dude, that shit was so good. Um, she's great. She's just super good. I think her. I didn't. I guess I never really knew her origin. Like the only other shit. I feel like all the stuff I've, I've we've read with her, like she's just in, you know, she's just already bad girl, um, if yeah. not farther along where she's or, she's Oracle, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then like in DC superhero su- superhero Supergirls, like she's already just she's already just bad girl. Um, sure. So like it was cool. It was cool kind of seeing like how this how this came to be and like oh Batman. Needs to show up at the fucking the rally for for Commissioner Gordon. It's like, nah, Batman. Batman's not gonna be there. She's like, fuck you. He's gonna be there. <laughs> he'll fucking. He's gonna fucking be there. He'll be there, all right. <laughs> she's just, a symbol, dude. Yeah, he just he, she just makes the symbol, and then everybody cheers, and she leaves. What a. Uh huh. Th- she gave him what they want, and then she bailed. It's perfect. <laughs> Uh, couldn't, you know, tone down the lipstick for the Batman outfit, though. <laughs> Still. No. no. <laughs> no. 
Absolutely fucking not. Very, very noticeable. Look My, feel the good. funniest thing to me is like how obvious it is that it's her. And that people can't tell. Yeah. Like, especially <laughs> when they pull the bit of the mask and her hair is out. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Once her hair is out, it's like, come on. How many athletic redheads are there that this could be? In Gotham. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say in Gotham. <laughs> man um she had one line that i wrote down that was uh actually she had two but they were like in the same scene where they're on the her, she's on the rooftop and robin's on the rooftop and they're both watching uh what's his name through their binoculars and after that after they watch him and like some shit goes down uh she does like this little it's not quite like the like a baby voice, but she's like, if you won't let me help you, what else can I do? Like, super <laughs> innocent? And he's like, oh, yeah. Act, uh, very good. Robin just leaves, and she's like, that guy's a few bats short of a belfry. Like, what a fucking... Oh, it's so good, dude. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty great. She's just fun. Yeah, man. She's kicking ass. She's kind of, you know, she gets her ass kicked a little bit, admittedly. Yeah. That guy, at the end, pulls her mask off. He's like, I didn't know it was you. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Like, what are you doing, bud? Like, would, would it have made a fucking difference? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God. I guess this is kind of close. I really, I, I don't think I've ever read the comic of her origin. I was just looking it up. It sounds, it's kind of similar. Okay. She was dressed as Batman at a costume party. <laughs> Hell yeah. Inter- intervened in a thing. Yeah. Happening. Yeah, yeah. I think she was a librarian. It's her day job. I mean, that's in comics is like the big difference. Hell yeah. And then, fucking, like, I have a feeling we'll be seeing her again. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, the, the, the end of this episode, of the second episode is very looking at the camera, winking. <laughs> yeah. It's well, and, funny. like, winking between all the fucking characters who, like, because, because, yeah, Batman and Robin don't know who she is, right? They just know Batgirl, and then Bruce and Dick know Barbara. Yeah? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Presumably. Presumably. I mean, maybe Batman's just, you know... I feel like... You you would think. (laughs) I would think Batman would have figured it out. I mean, I thought... I think Commissioner Gordon also should have figured it out. No, he's 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 like daughter blind or whatever. Like it's his baby girl. I can't be here. Dude, you would be surprised. You know, like one time Anya when before the world was fucked up, she came to visit like as a surprise. I knew. But like to surprise my parents, my family and all that stuff. She was literally following me from my car and my mom was watching from the window and she like didn't register it was Anya because she's like there's no way it could be her. She's in Russia. But she was looking right at her face. <laughs> sometimes, mm-hmm. man. Sometimes people just they if they if they think a thing is impossible. But Batman should definitely know, for like a hundred percent. But like he also should have mm-hmm. known Morse code, I think. So you never know. <laughs> uh huh. Whatever. Sure. Yeah, shit's uh, shit's very cool. Yeah, and I like the whole thing of um, Gil ducking before getting shot at. Oh, that, like, yeah, yeah. That that clue. Yeah. I also remember thinking that was very cool when I was, like, six. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Watch man. this. Oh, that's so fucking clever. And actually, I think the the best part about that is that it actually happens. Like, you see it 
it at mm-hmm. the event and then later on TV they show it and I'm like holy shit I literally watched this scene and I didn't like register that cuz like shit was happening you know sure that was very cool yeah I can't, I am so far away from being able to forget that fact <laughs> well yeah no shit so, yeah. like I would if I if I circle back around to this ever I'd be shocked if I was like whoa what <laughs> this happened literally 30 years ago yeah <laughs> going back into my brain <laughs> so <laughs> makes sense that a lot of the shit is burned in there a lot of it's very good yeah and also you know I've rewatched a, a, a lot of it yeah m- multiple times yeah also yeah yeah um oh yeah also we this is matches Malone matches we Malone. get Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Which is a that this is that is Batman's classic undercover disguise is Matches Malone. God, gotcha. that, that is the one that he goes to many times. Nice, and in the comics and stuff. Who and it's like it like Matches Malone was a gangster who died, and Batman's kind of like taken over that identity. <laughs> it's like a but he's like a known person in the crime world. Interesting. Yeah, he's definitely not that here. No. Matches Malone, huh? I've never heard of you. Yeah. Which I guess if he was known in the crime world in the comics, that makes that line much funnier. Yeah. yeah. Eh, it's a big crime world, you know? A lot of crime. Only so much ram. Crime. Only so much ram in the brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I also I like this um, this Two Face plot is very good. Oh yeah, like trying to not literally bump off Commissioner Gordon, but like bump him off the, the like the, the two spot. the two pronged attack of wipe out, take down Thorn, and use that to prop up his man inside the police office to take over the cops too. Yeah, at the same time. Oh yeah, no that the plot was super cool. And that's, like, one of the things, like, watching these, like, the plots are fucking good. Like, it's... Yeah, they're good stories. It's... I honestly, before, like, before I went in, I literally was just kind of expecting, like, more punchy. (laughs) Like, enemy of the week, we have a fight, like, something happens, we gotta beat the bad guy. But it's, it's definitely more on, like, the... Every you know, there's angles and there's like obviously the bit of detective work or whatever. Like it's just cool, mm-hmm. like and how it, you know, more nuanced. On top of the psychological stuff, yeah. On top of all that, with some of the, the tragic <laughs> characters and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we have an episode where Black Man's blind. <laughs> this one was pretty good. I mean, I like the shit, just like the funny shit with Leslie being like, please, I beg of you, you're blind, <laughs> please, just sleep. You're actually blind, please take two days to rest. And he, Was that before they Impossible. called her to the house and he was like, no, Alfred, I'm fine. He stands up and like tips over a table and a lamp. <laughs> That's after that. Okay. Yeah. I got this. I think. <laughs> I mean, the, look, the tech thing is cool. Like, the, the thing he has. But partially because we get red-eyed cowl, which is fine. Uh-huh. That shit's good. <laughs> um, yeah, he gets daredevil vision. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is part of me. I wish we could have seen a little bit more of, like, I closed my eyes energy. Like, I would have liked to see mm-hmm. him being blind and being a little bit more, like, on top of things. Instead of, like, Penguin tips but over. But it's his... very funny when he says, I got this, and immediately knocks over a <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> but, like, after we have the whole, like, he navigates the room of traps with his eyes closed, and then, like, Penguin tips over a screwdriver, and he, like, starts throwing batarangs. Like... <laughs> It's a little 
<laughs> kind of a stark contrast. Yeah. You're not wrong. He's just p- trying to find a place to plug in his iPod. Yeah, the little the little charge cord. The battery. Yeah. <laughs> he has his little belt battery pack. Mm-hmm. That shit's good. He keeps hitting himself in the head to get his thing to work. <laughs> yeah, he has to like donk it. That's pretty good. <laughs> makes me think because like he definitely also suffered a concussion oh dude a hundred percent like <laughs> he's like hitting himself in the head man I'm exploded like, so damn. hard he lost vision and he's <laughs> like i'll fix this helmet bam 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 <laughs> actually you know what that reminded me i had a note about uh 53 the crime doctor episode um, mm-hmm. where he gets nicked in the head with the medical laser and yeah. he keeps like touching his head the whole time and like it hurts and stuff I really thought they were gonna go farther with that like I thought there was gonna be something no. like inside his skull that was fucked up they actually say he has a concussion they out do, loud they do say he has a concussion I was like he keeps like touching like this has to be going somewhere and it just like, kind of never did like, just it was like, just oh, like man Batman would definitely get CTE. I feel like I know what that is, but I forget what it stands for. That's like where you get the enough concussions that's the, that you like. Yeah, that's the car like brain condition that yeah, football players yeah, get. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Gotcha. That's what I thought. No, 100%, dude. I mean, there's also uh, kind of in line with the... Uh, like the man chronic he... traumatic encephalopathy. Gotcha. I mean, it's kind of in line with the. Uh... Oh, you know what? It's not even in line with like the old like cartoon tropes of like quicksand and man eating sharks and whatever. It's just a thing that like happens everywhere. Um, I don't know, there was definitely a couple of times I think in the in this batch of episodes and probably in the other ones where. Batman gets, like, hit really hard, and he wakes up, like, however much longer later. Like, if Uh you're getting hit so hard, you're out for more than, like, a few seconds. Like, you have brain damage, dude. (laughs) You're not, you're not out cold for ten minutes and then wake it up normal. That's not how that one works. But that's not a, that's not a cartoon thing. That's a everything thing. Yeah. (laughs) It was a different time. It was a you know the like people just got hit in the head back then. Yeah, that's a and that's a you know a much worse version of Batman Beyond. Oh, do they? Does it happen more there? Well, no, I just mean like the version where old Batman is like really fucked up. Oh, gotcha. Like where he's got actual brain damage Oof. as an older man instead of still being sharp. Oof. Yeah, that would. Uh... The, the realistic way. <laughs> yeah. That's no fun. No fun. Oh, you mean what they did in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure when they decided to bring back uh, 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 Gen 2 JoJo as an old man and he has dementia and it's super cool and everybody loves it because that's such a fun concept. Great. Uh, real fucking salty about that one. Anyway. <laughs> um... Also, this thing, this stealth helicopter is literally part of the plot of Goldeneye. <laughs> oh, I, I did not know that. That's pretty... Yeah, there's a, stealth, there's a stealth helicopter in that movie, too. Nice. Did they sell toys of this stealth helicopter? Because when I saw it, I was like, I would buy it. I would buy this as a toy. Maybe? You need to have something for the Batmobile, or the Batjet to fight. I don't remember that as a toy. I like. I did like. Um, I was wondering how they what they were going to do. Because the thing is, a lot of the toy designs were like much more toyetic than would ever appear in the show. Gotcha. Like I see a bat police helicopter. Although, oh Jesus! But I don't see. I like a police helicopter with theming from this, but. 
I don't see the helicopter from this episode. Interesting. Damn. No, because, like, uh, in the beginning, right, you see this helicopter, it has stealth capabilities, it starts firing, and I'm like, why is Wayne Tech developing this? And then it literally jumps to Bruce saying, like, I don't know how I feel about developing <laughs> I've got, weapons. I've got major reservations about, it's like, yep, and now it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So that was, like, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Funny. Like every time they want to show Wayne Tech doing something fucked up, they always like got to slip a lie to Bruce saying, "I don't know about this." Yeah. Oh man, that <laughs> from from the second batch of episodes, I guess, where he's like, "Shut it down." I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. rainforest thing. Yeah, man. That that moment lives <laughs> in my head rent free. <laughs> the delivery is ten out of ten. The content ten out of ten. I do like Penguin's, like, camera setup. Like, he's a fucking vlogger. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sending his message to the cops. Yeah. <laughs> got his, he's got his little setup. That's fun. Yeah. The band's a... Hundred a fat hundred mil. Mm-hmm. Surely you it's have a lot in in the yeah, or yeah. <laughs> yeah in the nineteen fifty nine ninety twenty yeah futures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, and then we've got another two parter. Yeah. Uh. The Demon's Quest. What a fucking cool name. (laughs) Written by Dennis O'Neill, who wrote the comic books that this story is based on. Nice. It's the creator of Rachel Ghoul. Yep, and that's my my first note. Rachel Ghoul? What? Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. But we uh, talked about that already. I really like this, uh, the whole, the whole plot going on. Mm-hmm. It was very cool. Yeah, like... this, this, this episode feels bigger, partially because Rach just shows up in the bat cave and is like, Dude. come with me, detective. Dude, him <laughs> gotta go on a quest. And... Yeah, man. <laughs> that shit's good. Like, he also took Talia. Mm-hmm. The demon's head. Yeah. Man. And just like... I mean, I I think I like the... I don't know. I guess as far as like the, the story goes, I really like the first episode. Like the first half of it. Doing the... Sure, the quest. The, the quest going all the different places. And you're like... As a first time watcher... I was like, uh-huh. I'm fairly certain Rachel Ghoul is uh, the baddie <laughs> in this. Uh-huh. But also, like, part of it was, you know, I'm like, are they, how, you know, maybe he's not going to be, like, full bad. Maybe there is, like, like, probably he didn't, you know, maybe he didn't have these assassins attack them in Cairo or wherever. I, I wasn't really sure. I wasn't totally sure. And I don't, I mean, I think you're not really sure until it gets to like whatever. I, I forget what country they were in where he, uh, the whole time, right? Uh, uh, Raish's servant isn't letting, what's, what's his name again? It's like Ubu. Uru. Um, Uwu. <laughs> Uwu. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Ubu. <laughs> I think so. I'm also blanking. Is it in the... Is it in the... Ubu. What is it? Ubu? Ubu. Hell yeah, he's done it. Um, You know, the whole time Ubu is like... Not letting Batman go first. 
That that mm-hmm. shit was fucking great because he's like, that's strike one. The strike one shit was so good. That that was it just so. Oh, so I also love when cool. Batman goes after you. Yeah, he's fucking exaggerated <laughs> bow. Um, but they're playing, and that then when eventually when, at, when Strike Three comes, and he just fucking like crushes his hand. Yeah, like he was clearly fucking stro- like so much better than him the entire time. Oh. Um, but they're playing. That I mean, the thing, thing about Episode Two is we get we get the shirtless sword fight. No, which but is really, but but for the. The strike thing they're playing it up right and then when yeah. you get to the panther area he does nobody says anything and he just walks in and the door shuts and then you're like mm-hmm. i think Raish is the baddie actually uh-huh like yeah, for yeah. sure that's the moment uh-huh. when you're like confirmed and then you know they you know batman is no no fool he says the same thing that you're thinking yeah and that's mm-hmm. but yeah no the fucking the fucking mask only fight. <laughs> he has the cowl. He's like, leave the mask on. It's a mark of honor. It's a mark of honor. So he looks like a fucking crazy person. <laughs> yeah. Shirtless Batman with the mask is so good, though. That's a it's, lot more. It's a lot more chaotic energy than a uh, maskless Batman with outfit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... We had that fucking uh, also like part two, the, the uh, along with that uh, part two's advantage is that like Talia is great, <laughs> mm-hmm. she's just fucking cool. Uh, she fucking slaps Raish back into sanity. Yes, I can handle mm-hmm. this. Batman walks up and just bah! he just needed a good hard slap. Him fucking laughing like that. <laughs> he's just laughing yeah, he's so just... long complete insanity yeah god god the voice acting is so good in this show dude it is very solid like continues to be i yeah. think like i mean it's like, also like because the their the the voice director who works on all these shows andrea romano is just fucking great at her job gotcha. <laughs> she's great at fi- picking people to play these parts and giving them good direction. <laughs> yeah. Like if you look at the credits, like her, she gets big. Her name, her, her name gets big because she fucking deserves it. She's fucking kills it. in in terms of casting and getting performances out of people. Yeah. No, I mean like absolutely phenomenal. Like there's no, I think even up through now, like, there's, I've not, even, like, for main characters, for side characters, like, one-off villains or whatever else, I don't think there's been any whiffs that I can think of. But the only one is original Alfred for, like, those two episodes. And I don't even remember it, it, so. (laughs) (laughs) And it, like, it stands out partially because Alfred's going voice is so good. Yeah, yeah. Alfred rules. Yeah, no, dude, it's it's real fucking good. But like everybody else is absolutely crushing it too. True. True. Fucking, you know. While we're on it, pour one out for what people do to Harley Quinn's voice. Fucking rip. Yeah. Every time I hear her talk now, I'm like. She wasn't that bad. Why did you have to do? <laughs> Didn't have to be this way. Why did you make me hate her? Straw no, man that... cosplayer. I mean, that was one though that, like, even at the time, I'm like, if they recast this part, it's gonna be bad. Because <laughs> this character is this voice actress. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, she brings so much to it. Like even in the. You know, because she's doing, like, the, the Harley Quinn, like, typical shenanigan shit. But then even when it's, like, like her and Poison Ivy, like, that mm-hmm. that angle. Or, like, her on the fucking Joker Fisherman commercial where she's like, I have a thing with fish. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like, that's so fucking good. Uh-huh. 
like yeah no and her range is so from like squeeing because the joker is showed up in the harley ivy episode yeah it's like i came back to get what's mine and she's actually squeeze yeah yeah <laughs> what well, like doing like, to like, like the small sabuina line <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, and I was going to say, like, her going to, like, the Harleen Quinzo. Like, mm-hmm. and just going to yeah, that, yeah, it's yeah. really good. I... Yeah, we're going to get even more of her, like, showing her off that range, so... It's going to be good. Yeah, I was actually just going to say something, and I realized that's actually uh, season two, <laughs> I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Excited for that shit. Um, yeah, fucking Lazarus Pit. Getting back to the episode. Um, sure. Like, there's just a pit of fucking... Like, can anyone use the Lazarus Pit? If you're dying, yeah. Well, yeah, with that little stipulation. Or, like, apparently if you're not, sometimes, also... Yeah, I mean, he lives at the end. You're not. That's not wrong. Anyone can use it. Rachel Ghoul is mostly the only one who uses it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I was actually thinking because we got a super interesting thing in this episode, which I like. Part of me wants it to be like pushed further because I kind of like the. I like the idea of Batman having a, an adversary who's not, like, an enemy slash villain, you know? And that's kind of like with Talia. Like, I like where she sits in that, because, like, she's not... She's enemy-enemy, but, like, she can't really be trusted either. I like mm-hmm. that dynamic, because for everyone else, it's like, are we going to put the Joker in a gray zone? <laughs> like, not no. currently. Um... Catwoman also. Catwoman also. Catwoman, yeah. She sits in that zone, but because, like, she will help. She's a good person. She will help Batman. But also, she's going to steal some cat-themed jewelry. Yeah. This and, is going to happen. Yeah. And, and like, we might the, not care, but Batman cannot abide. But the offer that uh Rachel Ghoul has where he's like I want you to take my place and continue my work. Uh-huh. I find that like that's such a cool angle and then obviously it turns into like full like okay, you won't take my place, fucking fine. I'll nuke the planet. <laughs> we'll take care of it that way. And like I uh, like it's fine. That shit was also good. We got a lot of good stuff out of it, but uh-huh. I find that concept super cool. Like, has there ever been a, has there been, like, one of the, like, a DC what if or something where, like, Batman would accept that offer? Does that offer occur in comics or anything, do you know? I mean, that offer, I'm pretty sure, exists in comics. I don't think there's a what if where Batman accepts it, though. Because, like, that'd be, that'd be cool. And, like, he says no, and I'm like, you could accept the offer and then put your own spin on it also. Problem is, like... Accepting that is like becoming the head of the League of Assassins. That's what <laughs> Rachel Gould's the head of. Yeah, you could turn it around. <laughs> like, it's a League of Assassins because that's what you can make it your own league. Uh, uh, what are the fucking nameless henchmen gonna do? Mutiny? Doubt? <laughs> I'm just saying he could have done it. But, like, also, he didn't want to marry Talia. And that's insane. Mm-hmm. But also, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it seemed like it was kind of a two part deal. Sure. He doesn't want to be told what to do. You know? I mean, I get it. I definitely get that. I do like at the. It's at the end of this where Ubu throws him the water, right? Mm, no. 
have I, have I gone? Have I gone farther? Maybe. Yeah, I went farther. Never mind. Never mind. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Look, I was watching this shit on two hours of sleep in a thirty-hour day. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's not my fault that the ep- the first episode of it we get in season two also was desert themed. So that's uh sure. That's really linking them in the brain. Um. Hmm. So yeah, never mind that. Nothing. Nothing happened. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel cool O'Neill, O'Neill said he, when he was creating, like the big things were like he was trying to think of a Moriarty type villain for Batman, and also he didn't want to, he didn't love. Like the theatrical costume part of superhero stuff, like that just wasn't what he was into. So he wanted, mm-hmm. so he had spent time thinking about a way to make Rachel Gould's like appearance unique without a costume necessarily. Yeah. Oh, I think it works. It looks really mm-hmm. cool. Also, wow, a Moriarty character that's not fucking garbage. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> My biggest trigger. No, stuff is well, uh, stuff is neat. Now you've got a good example. What it could yeah, be. Yeah. Yeah. He just goes around someone who goes around calling the hero detective. <laughs> yeah, that's all I needed. <laughs> Why do none of these more other Moriarty's do it? It's so easy. It's free real estate. Call him detective, know his secrets, and put him in traps. Have a hot daughter. It's so easy. True. (laughs) Also. Have a baddie for a daughter. Mm -hmm. But what Uh, if, hear me out. Yeah. What if Batman was a robot? What if Batman were a robot? So this episode came from, there was a, there was going to be a part in the Heart of Steel episode where Batman fought a robot Batman, but they had to cut it for time, so... That makes sense. Instead, we got this episode. <laughs> this shit was cool. Yeah, I, I, I prefer the episode early on when the robot Batman just thinks he's Batman. I... When agree. he just becomes Hardak, it's less interesting. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Like... I was like, really here. You're idea. fixed. You're finished. Your programming's finished. Now you are not believable, and you act more like a fucking machine. Yeah, him not knowing, him being like, "What the fuck happened to me?" Alfred, help! Alfred, help! And like, oh, that shit was so cool. I do. Yeah. I, I honestly like... wish they'd played it harder so that, like, you, the audience, doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. I mean, even at first, I didn't know it was Robot Batman. I was just like, holy shit, Batman was hiding in the box. <laughs> <That's dedication. laughs> um, I think they, like, they circled it around, and I, I, I really enjoyed the ending. Um, mm-hmm. That he was, like, still enough Batman to be like, what have I done? Yeah, and that kind of felt like, with without knowing, just like an armchair analysis. I'm like, mm-hmm. this kind of feels like they wanted Batman to accidentally kill someone, but they absolutely could not have Batman do that in the in this show right now. So this is kind of like a getting to see what his reaction might be, and like, it, it, a tiny glimpse of that. Maybe it's not true, but like that's what was running through my head. Mm-hmm. And it was yeah, good. I'm pretty sure it was just the, just the they had the robot Batman idea sitting there. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean that not that they did the episode because of that, but like, sure, it's something they could also explore or something. Because uh-huh. like, there's no way you're letting Batman let someone die in <laughs> the show like that. Sure. That's what that's what the movies are for. <laughs> Batman letting people fall to their deaths. 
Yeah. Same for the big Literally screen. how Batman 89 ends. <laughs> it's how Batman <laughs> Begins ends. Who is it? Who, do, who, do, who dies in Batman Begins? I forget. Raish. Ra's al Ghul. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. He yeah. lets him fall at the end. Right. I don't... Like, I don't... <laughs> Yeah. It's like, I don't have to save you, but I don't... I, or I'm not going to kill you, but I don't have to save you either. Isn't that what he says in that movie? Dude, I don't <laughs> fucking know. I haven't seen those movies in ages. Yeah. I think he said... I think he specifically says that. I'm like, that's fucked up for Batman to say that. Yeah. That's... So, I don't like that take. Yeah, no, no. After having seen this... But, again, it's in line with movie Batman. Yeah, sure. That movie, first one ends with Joker falling off a tall building. <laughs> Great. As was the style at the time. Villains falling off tall buildings. <laughs> as, as, was the, as was the style. Hell yeah. They're good compilations of villains falling off of tall buildings in movies. Nice. I think I think Die Hard is. I mean, a big, big fucking part thing of that. Lord of the Rings, Saruman. Well, I mean that's later, but yes. But, you know, also, so. that one isn't even in the theatrical cut, so I don't know what you're talking about. They're like the if you're not watching extended, why even bother? Because I watched the movie in the theater. I don't, why would I watch the movie again? You should have waited for the extended edition <laughs> <laughs> that you knew was coming. Obviously, and also if you don't see that scene, then you can keep your hopes up that the scouring of the Shire is going to happen. <laughs> I'd be extra disappointed when it doesn't. Yay! Because <laughs> you don't know that they already threw him off the building, so they don't have to do that plot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, you got anything more about Robot Batman? No. No, these were these are got... we're, we're in the episodes where I I didn't have time to re skim to get my to do notes. Okay, so. we got fires from Olympus. Holy with the guy who thinks shit. he's Zeus. Fucking incredible, honestly. Like, what a <laughs> dumb, fun concept. I think the be- easily the highlight of this is when Batman is rising up in the jet, and he's like, my brother Hades! <laughs> he's, like, losing his mind, and Batman comes out like, this is, like, actually fucking perfect. Like, Batman rising up as Hades from the underworld of Gotham <laughs> is actually fucking incredible. And then he, when Batman's coming in through the building, he's like, oh, he comes back as a worm. Yeah, dude. Not as an eagle. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, my God. That shit was so good. Like, it's such a dumb fucking thing. Like, I'm Zeus. <laughs> and it, uh, and the, uh, I love the ending where he's, like, in Arkham and he's like, finally, Olympus. Yeah. He's like, surely. <laughs> dear Narcissus, dear Demeter. <laughs> Ah, trickster Hermes. <laughs> it's a fucking Joker. <laughs> that shit. If ever a guy needed to be in Arkham. Dude, he's like... <laughs> he's kind of like the most crazy in a way. Yes, because like, he completely disassociates with reality. Yeah, I was going to say, his reality is like by far the most warped. Yeah. I mean, shit's well, fucking sad, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, our next episode with the ventriloquist is close second, though. That dude is wild. So like, this one, um... So this character was not that old in the comics when, it, when this episode was made. Like, he's, kind of, I think, late 80s. But, um... He's actually from, like, the run of comics that was uh, Alan Grant and Wagner, I think. I think Wagner was still on the book when they did it. But, like, they were repurposing old Judge Dredd stories as Batman stories, basically. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, stories that they had, they had originally conceived of as things they were writing for for Judge Dredd, but then just reused them as 
Batman stories because they'd never because now they were on Batman. <laughs> yeah. Instead of Dread Judge Dread. Um But in the comics, the ventriloquist has like a couple big differences. One, he's not a good ventriloquist in the comics. <laughs> <laughs> like one of the bits is that he's like you can see his mouth moving and he's there are certain letters he can't pronounce. Oh, that's great. Um that would and also it, that makes it so much funnier. <laughs> um and also in the comics the ventriloquist hates Scarface. Oh, interesting. He's not like he's not like a loyal it, servant. Sub- completely yeah. sub to him <laughs> in the way he is in the show. Yeah. Which I think I think I like the show's version better. Honestly. Like they they play it plays better for uh, also for like the show in terms of playing into the tragedy of the thing more. Yeah, sure. Then I making can, the ventriloquist just another scumbag. Yeah, yeah. No, dude, like I mean, also we get the bit where <laughs> Batman solves it by doing his own ventriloquism thing. <laughs> uh-huh. That he learned from Zatara. <laughs> yeah, dude. Bring like that was, and then fucking the ventriloquist is like, what? No, I didn't say this. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Scarface telling his men to shoot the ventriloquist. Dude. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, uh, boss? <laughs> that, that would be bad. And then ending with Scarface getting fucking riddled with bullets. Yeah. Oh, my God. They went so <laughs> hard on him for ra- like they ragdolling. So, they're like, oh, my God. We're just shooting a piece of wood. Fucking go for it. <laughs> Guys, you can find the What are your brass going to do? It's a piece of wood. <laughs> it's a puppet. <laughs> God. And then at the, the end, like, jamming the knife into his face. Oh, my God. Make yeah. the new Make scar. The scar, yeah. That's so much better than the, the just like drawn on one he has for the majority of this episode. Yeah, yeah, no, that shit was great. And because like the venture, like when they're there, it's like, oh, that's such good work. And he's like, thank you. Like he's such mm-hmm. a nice, soft spoken man. He's just fucking making it again. <laughs> nah, this was a super also, fun episode. Also, like Rhino is like a really good henchman. Rhino is a he's solid like... henchman, dude. <laughs> Giant. <laughs> Moron. I mean, he's giant, but like also uh his interaction I think was it Batman who was first talking to him and he's like not saying anything? Like he's doing he's yeah, making yeah, some yeah. smart moves. He's not fucking running his mouth. Yeah, he's like, You don't got anything on me. Yeah, man. <laughs> that was good. Finally, some good help. <laughs> Jesus. It's so hard to find these days. <sighs> Um. Yeah, the the getting the platinum out of the boat, but then it was a trap for Batman. Yeah, I love that they <laughs> they dump that pile of platinum on Batman. And you're like, Batman is fucking dead. Yeah, dude. Like it sounded beefy too. It had a good chomp to it. He's like, fucking crunched. Yeah. It's like yeah, he's fine. We now he's tied up by a rope. Don't yeah, worry about it. Yeah, it's, you, know, you got as the, you know he's he's a tough lad. He's, he's okay. Because that, that that episode had a commentary, and they were they were saying originally in the script like you're just gonna get gassed, <laughs> but like <laughs> the the when they were making it, they're like, well, we should sh- we got Rhino right here. We should show off to like set up the fight between Batman and Rhino later, where Batman's like punching him and it's not doing anything. Hell yeah. Um. But then, then you like watch it, and you're like, "Oh, we kind of went a little hard there." <laughs> <laughs> really fucked up, Batman. Batman. Um, he'll be fine. And then we've got the worry men. This was, the, it was okay. The thing I the thing I like about this movie is of this episode is it seems like it's like, "Ooh, are you doing like these fucking?" Ad- Adventure serial tropes that are racist. It's like the Mad Hatter is playing into these this shit. These are like props from a fucking <laughs> playhouse. Yeah, yeah. I did think that like they fucking got me. Like I was like, are you just doing like a 
fucking Aztec or Mayan something. Like no, it's actually an bullshit. Englishman exploiting <laughs> a different culture to fucking yeah. play on the the desires of some other fucking white lady. <laughs> yeah, dude. Actually, I thought the way that played was pretty funny. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, like the spin on that was although great. They, although they kind of fall into it at the end anyway, but with the with the where the medicine man makes the worry the like little Batman to put under the bed at her pillow at the end. I mean, I thought that was fine. It's it's funny, yeah. It's like, funny because they had the dude like making the little dolls anyway. Like that's a yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Look, mm-hmm. of the things they could be doing. <laughs> Completely. I, I agree. And I do... Th- um, I mean, honestly, I like that the Red Hatter's just like, yeah, I just want to get rich and fucking buy an island. Yeah, even, <laughs> but even that's expensive. a little island. <laughs> even one no one's heard of in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> expensive. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think putting it's... Putting 20 million bucks in a suitcase... Yeah, yeah, dude. Woman's like, I don't know why you would do it, but okay, you're the boss. Here's twenty million. Oh, wait, what did I do? What? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, even the the early shit with the adventure society or whatever. Mm. Um, and she's handing these out. I'm like, that's such a. Like even if if even if you're not doing like the, oh, I forget the term. We literally, I remember in university for some class or another, learning like the term for like tourism that goes to like a tribal village, and like it used to be really bad in like the fifties or whatever, and people would just go and mm-hmm. literally look at them like it's a fucking zoo. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And there's like still. No, no, not whether it's necessarily like good or bad, but just like kind of the type of people that would go, or like the type of people who travel and they come back and just like how they talk. And her, yeah, yeah. her talk about like, oh, like a shaman made these dolls and they take your worries away. And like, I have three like on me right now, and that, that, that. And and the fact that she has like a, like hundreds of them, and I was just it yeah, made yeah, me yeah. think of people who are like, I went to Greece and. <laughs> this this old man on the street like saw me and said I was so beautiful and like gave me this ring for eighty euros like <laughs> like something like that I don't know yep uh huh just it's pretty funny yep and then Alfred cost Bruce Wayne twenty million dollars <sighs> yeah he's just trying to do <laughs> just trying to give him a little less stress from Bruce and. uh he gave him 20 million more points to strength. <laughs> Man, he felt so bad, too. Like, they fucking, the characters are just so good. Like, I I legitimately, it, it would get more into it and, like, the, the other shit that we got coming up. Um, uh-huh. But, like, holy shit, they make me, like, connect with these characters in a way that I did not think this cartoon would be doing. Because, totally. like, when Alfred says he feels bad, I feel bad that Alfred feels bad. He should feel good. He's a good person. Alfred deserves to be in the pool. Relaxing. <laughs> he deserves to be uh, uh, swept off his feet by what's her name? <laughs> yeah. I don't remember her name anymore. Yeah, no, I mean, maybe she was in more than one episode one time. Yeah. But. Unfortunate. Alfred. But Alfred is the most based human on Earth. And so I just want things to be okay for him. Yeah, man. Oh, this T, I mean, sir. <laughs> season one fucking. That's it. We wrapped in it. In the books. Like. God, what a fucking good show. <laughs> like, just what a. They're all good. 
like even the ones that are like meh they're just like they're not even bad they're just like they're fine they're okay yeah totally. this is fucking wild yeah no i agree <laughs> who knew who fucking knew dude i knew i didn't nobody told me <laughs> <laughs> this whole fucking time I was like why do people like Batman so much it's so edgy yeah. now this is this kind. This show is kind of like like if you grew up with it it's like almost too obvious to point out how good it is to other people I so, guess you know. yeah I could see that you know what this show needs like, what a redubbing where Batman has his like I'm Batman It'd just redub the whole thing. It'd be perfect. Because <laughs> the other thing is, like, every Batman show that comes after this is living in the shadow of this one. Like, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> like, has to deal with the fact that this show existed and was so good. Um, And, like, how do you live up to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or... You know, the one that I like the most is actually find a different angle. <laughs> yeah. In terms of just being a different thing. Because um, if you just give the Joker dreadlocks, not that into it. Which one gave him dreadlocks? <laughs> the Batman. Like the Robert Pattinson one? The three-hour movie? No, no. There's a cartoon called The Batman. Oh, 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 okay. Dude, someone <laughs> someone on the plane was watching. Like, they turned on... Su- they, they, like, the per- a person in front of me, in the row ahead of me. They turned on Suicide Squad. Uh-huh. Zero desire to begin with, but holy shit. Like, what a terrible Joker design. What a god-fucking-awful Joker design. It's really bad. It's like people, people who looked at it, it just sucks. It yeah. just sucks. <laughs> it just sucks really hard. But like people who look at Heath Ledger's Joker and they're like, yeah, like society or whatever. And they're fucking, you know, what? Uh, who, who was it? Who was the person who was like, stay away from me and my family <laughs> about Rorschach? I forget who wrote that. Uh, Alan Moore. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like that kind of vibe. I think if you're looking at like Suicide Squad Joker and you're like, yeah, like that's like me. Like that's my kind of like, holy shit. (laughs) See it. See someone get help. Some crazy Uh... bullshit. Yeah, here's here's the Joker design from the cartoon show The Batman. Oh, you know what? This does look familiar. I have seen this popping around just randomly. Hey, that's uh that's no good. That's fucking lame. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're just their takes on the characters weren't interesting. They were just kinda like lame. Yeah. I mean and his eyes like he just he looks like an animal. Mm-hmm. It's kind of yeah, it's meh. Yeah, it's meh. I will say when they do the redesigns for these characters, like when the after Superman, um, mm-hmm. the Joker's design does get a little worse. It does get worse. Oh, interesting. Because they, they take away they like take away his lips. <laughs> oh, so he just has like a lion mouth. Um, and it's just not quite as good because like, like a lot of that design is, is simplifying the characters. So they're, it's easier for the animators to stay on model. So yeah. you lose some stuff, but without the um, lips, how is Harley Quinn going to draw the lips in her <laughs> plate of vegetables? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then they've kind of fix him for later stuff, but like just a gotcha. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, some characters in the with the redesign, some characters get better, some characters get worse. Yeah, yeah. Scarecrow gets better. <laughs> what about Poison Ivy? 
Poison Ivy, I would say it's more on the worse side. No! Son of a bitch. Well, I think this Poison Ivy design is really good, so. And and the the general thing of um the female characters in the redesign mostly going to becoming more generically the same shape. <laughs> yeah. Is a thing that happens also, unfortunately. I gotta say So so that's part of it. I mean for uh, for, for I think she does get start get green skin the green skin thing though. In the redesign. I like the I was gonna say I kinda like the green skin version. Yeah, so maybe you'll like it more. I, I just know. think it I think it adds like it lets you know immediately that like she has something extra about her instead of just growing weird plants. Mm-hmm. Is is my deal because otherwise like y you wouldn't know. Like yeah. Oh, she doesn't get green skin. She gets like, she just becomes paler. Really, it's kind of the, it's in the opposite direction. <laughs> it's yeah. not gr that's not great. I'll just send you a picture. Yeah, hit, hit, yeah, hit me. We'll get there eventually, anyway. Um, just because we're on character design stuff. I see. I, you know, I do, and I, like, I recognize this too a bit. Uh... I... I want... I, I think, like, very, very slightly I would skew towards upgrade, but, like, maybe also I could see, like, a side grade. Yeah. Well, I think, like, a bigger part of it is just, like, you lose some animation touches sure look man to like us to the to the simplified design he's got that dark outfit and the dark lipstick like come on come on <laughs> that's true those are facts those are yeah yeah the pale skin kind of like that does like i don't know why they had to do that because she's a goth she's she's a goth girl now Mm. I don't have an answer. Well, fuck, you're, you're supposed to be the guy. I don't have all the answers. Uh, it is a fucking internet. When they didn't think to what... make her skin green. Yeah, they, they <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, I think that's a podcast. Shit's the show's great. good. We finished season one. Oh, it's fucking so good. We're going to do Mask of the Phantasm next. Yeah. Spoiler alert, that movie rules. Spoiler alert, that movie fucking real good. <laughs> uh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Soul Circle Podcast, gmail.com. Soul Circle Pod on Twitter. I'm on Twitter at Comic Panels. I ain't on Twitter. Or anywhere. Internet's miserable. That's true. Peace.